Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Small Talks for Big Change, where we help simplify financial topics to help with your financial wellness. My name is Michelle Enriquez, Membership Development Manager here at Patelco Credit Union. Today, we're going to talk things all cybersecurity with Patelco's Principal of Info Security, Sean Casey. And Sean, I just found out today that you have over 25 years experience in information security. I sure do. I fell into it at an early age, and I've just kept going. Man, so. well, welcome to the studio. This is a long time coming. Yeah, I've been eager to get in here. It's a real pleasure <laughs> to be in. So we've done several episodes, Sean, on fraud and addressing ways that members can avoid scams. And specifically, we've talked about social scams, like scammers attempting to engage romantically with people, um, things like impersonating family members for ransom, people pretending to represent employers and tricking people to sending money for employment opportunities and even phone scams where people impersonate Patelco representatives. And you're the expert on cybersecurity, and we're going to talk today about how we can protect ourselves when we're on the Internet. And fraud and cybersecurity have been and is still such a big deal, right? It really is, both of them, and they go hand in hand. The spread of fraud via the cyber space that we have these days has has really become incredible. So the fraud team and I work very closely together to ensure that we're doing the best with our members. Uh, there's a few things that, that people can really do to, to help themselves. Uh, first, you know, your mobile device hygiene. Keep your laptops and your phones up to date. Uh, they say they're gonna do it automatically, but like most technology, you, you have to supervise them. Make sure mm-hmm. you get those those updates on your phones. Make sure you keep your laptop up to date. Keep the hackers out of there. Stay away from the suspicious websites. And for all of your important websites, which is almost all of them, set up multi-factor authentication yeah. so that you get that text message or you get that little pop-up on your phone saying, hey, is it really you trying to move $500 out of your savings account? Mm-hmm. And that goes a long way to, to stopping the bad guys. Interesting. Mobile device hygiene. Never heard that one before. But just like hygiene, it has to be a repetitive behavior. Exactly. You have to stay on top of it. It's a really big deal because these these bugs come out all the time. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you don't patch, those bugs leave your device vulnerable to a takeover. Talk to us about this MFA you've got in your notes here. What does this stand? <laughs> We're learning all kinds of new cybersecurity terms. So MFA stands for multi-factor authentication. And those are the text messages that spot that pop up on your phone with codes, you know, the, the six-digit code to enter into uh, an application somewhere. Some people have special authenticator uh, applications on their phones, so you don't even get the text message. You just go to the little app, and there's lots of instructions on how to get through that. I won't bore the audience with that. And then there are uh, devices that you can have where you actually have to be holding that device in order to pass. All of those are really good and very difficult for the criminals to push up against and and get through. It really goes the furthest for protecting your accounts and all of your logins everywhere. Nobody likes getting the message that you're reaching out on Facebook, uh, trying to get somebody into a cryptocurrency Uh, nonsense scam. And MFA does the same thing for your social media presence as well. Got it. I feel like multi-factor authentication um, is required on some things, but for some, it's something you have to opt into or set up. So for most social media, it's optional. Okay. Um, Many financial institutions are requiring it now. Okay. All right. MFA, multi-factor authentication and mobile device hygiene. Love those. Exciting. All kinds of little nuggets today. (laughs) So Forbes just released an article that read that cybercrime is growing exponentially. No surprise to us. That according to cybersecurity ventures, the cost of cybercrime is predicted to hit $8 trillion in 2023 and will grow to $10.5 trillion by 2025. Can we talk about artificial intelligence? Because this is coming up a lot. And there's a lot of questions and concern about AI in general. What can you tell us about some ways that AI is both benefiting us in the way that we serve our members and some things that we need to be aware of as AI evolves? Well, I'm going to start with the bad news. People may have heard about deep fakes, which are uh, AI creating video or audio of people using very, very simple inputs. We can think of it like the movie Forrest Gump, 
when Forrest Gump meets with famous presidents and, and they, they inserted Tom Hanks into the film. Mm. Back when that was published, it took millions of dollars and, and special video editors to do that. They can now fake your voice with about 30 seconds of audio and $5 on the internet. So what this translates to is if you get a call from somebody you know and it sounds like them, but they're saying, hey, I'm in jail, I need $5,000 in bail, it's very difficult for a human being to tell that that's not actually the, the loved one on the other end of the phone. So what I'm advising people to do is to set up passcodes in your, in your family and with your loved ones. Or if you don't have one, ask them a question that only they can answer. Mm. So like who was your second grade teacher or something that, that's not commonly available for somebody to, to understand. Otherwise, you could end up sending $5,000 to scammers and meanwhile your, your loved one is, is sitting at home playing a video game and, and you never called their phone because you were so worried about other things. Yeah, that's a really good call. So this is deep fakes and we're not talking football, you know, <laughs> Hail Mary, deep fake play. That's really interesting. My friend and I have a secret emoji oh, code yeah? that we have if we're ever in danger, but a good thing to establish with family, loved ones also, and if not an emoji, some secret passcode that yeah. you're talking about. That's a really great tip. Got a note here about bad guys that adopt AI faster than good guys. What's that all about? So as a working on the good guy side, wearing a white hat, I have I have found that it, we, are, we are very slow to adopt AI because we take a cautious approach. We don't want to put anything into our systems or allow anything to influence us that we have not fully vetted. Whereas your average cyber criminal, they're out there messing around with code if they fail in one particular attempt, it doesn't hurt them. So they can they can experiment and fail rapidly and and continue to use AI with almost no repercussions. So they are the ones who are jumping onto the, the deep fakes. They are the ones who are using AI to enhance their phishing and smishing messages to try to get people to take the bait and, and engage for a, a successful uh, episode. Talk more about these deep fakes. You mentioned here that some aren't perfect, that some strategies can defeat deep fakes. So computers are very good at identifying other computers and they can pick out the deep fakes. There are audio processing technologies available on customer service lines mm -hmm. to where it can identify based on characteristics of the of the way deep fakes are made, whether or not it is likely to be a human on the other end of the line. So your financial institutions are, are generally pretty good at, at picking out the deep fakes and it's unlikely that a deep fake will be calling into a service center and successfully compromising one of those companies. And then the other piece of good news to go with that is that the good guy AI is kind of like a late bloomer starting off stumbling, not looking too good, a little bit awkward. It's going to be really, really attractive and effective once once we finally get that matured to a level where we can we can use it effectively. Got it. So you're talking about technologies and financial institutions, Patalco included, investing in technologies to catch these deep fakes. What can the novice individual do to catch a deep fake? Well, first of all, you, you need to have that passcode in place or your, your secret emoji or, or some kind of the, the secret question that only that person could answer. Next is, is listen to whether or not the person is speaking the same way as, as your loved one. Hmm. So look out for awkward phrasing and anything else that just sounds off. If, if it feels wrong, investigate. Check it out. Get in there and, and make sure that this is this is actually the other person. All right, that's a good tip. The Forbes article I reference also says that phishing continues to be a preferred method of hackers in 2023. Tell us more about phishing and some key examples um, regarding phishing. So phishing and, and smishing are sending fake messages via email and text messages, uh, sometimes by uh, voice where they call you, and they're really just trying to get you to engage. So. First of all, when you receive a message that you from someone you don't recognize and it, it doesn't seem legit, don't even answer it. Delete it, report it as, as spam, yep. and get rid of it. If you are concerned that it may be legitimate, 
contact the institution that it claims to be from. Mm -hmm. So if one of our members receives a message purporting to be from Patelco, you don't have to answer that. Call our member service center. They, they love getting these calls because nine times out of 10, and probably more frequently than that, it's a pretext for fraud. And by calling the service center, you have just defeated fraud. It's, it's an easy way to be kind of a superhero. Now, when we're, when we're looking at the, the pretexts that they use for these items, really, really popular over the holidays were the fake package delivery alerts. Yep. Saying, oh, those. hey, you, you've got, you got a, a package we can't deliver from the U.S. Postal Service or something like that. Please go to this badguys.org <laughs> URL through the phone. Those, those were some of the more obvious ones, and, and there, were, there were a lot that were, that were much better. The people who are doing these scams out there, this is their job. This is how they feed their families and buy their cars, and they're good at it. They spend all day honing their craft, so we have to be very vigilant about these things. The other ones that we've been looking at are fake fraud alerts. So that that's the one that I focus on the most because it, it definitely affects our members and it affects our team in uh, dealing with what happens after somebody falls for one of these. So. You might get an alert saying, hey, did you just spend $75.19 at this local shopping center? Don't respond to it. Call the institution every time. There's there's a lot of fake phone numbers out there. There are so many fake messages flying around. I, I get at least five a day. It At this point, it's just annoying. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> During the holidays, I definitely got the you missed your package text at least five times a day, and it was usually DHL. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, because DHL doesn't have, you know, that huge presence out on the ground. Mm. People don't see the DHL trucks as much as they used to. So uh, it's it's easy because nobody, nobody has their account there or something like that to, to figure out whether or not they were actually receiving a, a package in advance. It's important to remember this is the opening move. And if you accidentally respond to one of those texts, call the financial institution, call whoever else might be involved because the sooner that that we get involved or that your other financial institution gets involved the sooner the easier it is to fix the problems so we've had all kinds of terms introduced today we've got mobile device hygiene multi-factor authentication which you've probably heard of before deep fakes phishing smishing have you heard the term digital citizens digital citizens was a new one to <laughs> me when when you sent me that i was <laughs> i had to go look it up it was new to me, too, so I had to Google it. So there are tons of definitions around digital citizenship online. I guess it's a, new, it's a thing now. I like this one. It reads, digital citizenship is the ability to use technology responsibly, safely, and respectfully. It involves developing the skills and knowledge to effectively and ethically engage with digital technologies. Digital citizenship encompasses a range of behaviors, such as protecting personal information, respecting others' privacy, and participating in society with politics online. What are your thoughts about that? That's a lot, but I think it kind of wraps all together everything that you've been talking about so far. So I would agree. First off, when I was a kid, uh, we were called nerds uh, for doing this. <laughs> but but now it's it's really foundational for having a less stressful life. The way we conduct ourselves online can, can make our lives more stressful or less. Mm -hmm. And when, when we follow the, the digital citizenship rules or, or guidelines, I think our lives are a lot better. Just keeping everything civil and, and wise is something we can all benefit from. So there were some good tips within kind of the definition of being a good digital citizen. What's your best advice for our members out there looking to practice good digital citizenship? I have to reflect back to my, my previous advice and that's put MFA everywhere. Yep. That's that's the, the number one way to, to keep keep things clean or at least solidly representing you. We don't want our uh, online persona to be taken over by bad guys who, you know, may put things out there that, that we don't agree with. You know, suddenly there's a bunch of social media posts that are, are the opposite of, of your own beliefs. And, and nobody wants to, to deal with the aftermath of that because the, the public is, is absolutely cruel. 
to, to people who, who make errors online. I would say that this is also a, a foundational item that we need to communicate to our kids. Kids are being presented with, with a huge amount of, of opportunities online these days at earlier and earlier ages. And I think we need to give them the tools to be wise online and to protect themselves. And then finally, when we're looking at all of this, I've delivered a whole lot of, of warnings and, and bad news and a couple tools, but don't be anxious. There's, there's a lot going on out there and there's almost always some, some grace available when, when mistakes are made so that you know, if, you get a hold of your, if you get a hold of your financial institution soon enough, you will be able to stop the money from flowing. Or if you have put MFA on your social media accounts, you never have to deal with somebody taking them over. Yeah, I think I'm hearing that communication is really key. I feel like every episode we hold here in the studio, it all comes back to communication, having conversations with our young ones and even our older aging parents also. I just found out that you've got teenagers at home and um, I've got one preteen and a younger one. And we're talking all the time about being good digital citizens, not clicking on links on phones while they're on YouTube and other things mm -hmm. online. So that's really key. But also having those same conversations, different conversations with my aging parents as well. But even being wary ourselves. So talking with our partners, our loved ones at home, with friends, and then knowing what resources we have available to us. So Patelco's got a really great resource on our, web sent, our website called Patelco's Fraud Center. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So Patelco publishes the Fraud Center to help the entire community uh, deal with fraud, prevent fraud, and uh, a lot of tools to help uh, be good digital citizens. Uh, there are resources there for, for helping our, our aging parents, uh, for helping our, our kids, our teens, um, and, and also reaching out into, into the community because I think a lot of the, these things happen, a lot of these bad episodes occur because we are not connecting with our, our friends and loved ones enough. And when we start to speak these things out loud to our friends, to our loved ones, to people we trust, it takes a different shape inside of our minds and, and we consider it more, more critically. So if, if I'm considering you know, taking advantage of a deal that I found online, I'll talk to my buddy about it. And he'll say, Sean, that's absolutely silly. And then I'll <laughs> say, you know what? You're right, buddy. Like, this is, this is a terrible idea. Let's not do that. And it's, this is especially true among the elderly crowd. So I do a lot of presentations at senior centers mm -hmm. to help them avoid fraud because they seem to be one of our more vulnerable populations in this case. And I've found that the... The socialization, the, the community, reaching out to your friends is, is so important because people who spend too much time alone, we, we seek different things to, to fill that hole and a lot of those can end up being taken advantage of by the scammers. Yep, and things are ever changing, right? So this fraud center that we've got is chock full of great information with updated scams that we're seeing and we see them all the time. Right. Listeners can find more information at patelco.org slash fraud. That's our fraud center at patelco.org slash fraud. But we talked earlier in the episode about this, this industry growing. So really just being wary, having those conversations that you're talking about is really critical to protecting ourselves and, and being these good digital citizens that we're talking about. Sean, it was really great to have you in the studio today. We're going to have to have you back. I feel like every fifth episode or so we're talking about fraud because it really is important and it is ever changing. Like we keep saying, there's all these new terms coming out all the time too. We might have to do an episode where we just unpack all the terms and make a glossary maybe. Well, that concludes today's episode of Small Talks for Big Change, where we help simplify financial topics to help with your financial wellness. We'll see you next time. Patelco Credit Union is insured by NCUA.